This is a test of the City of Clock audio system.
Good afternoon. Let's go ahead and call to order the Historical Preservation Board meeting of December 7th, 2023. We'll begin with our invocation led by uh, Chaplain Mulberry. Thank you very much. Followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States led by Jane West. Good evening, everyone. Father, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come before your presence again. We pray, God, for your guidance, and for your help, for your wisdom in undergirding us to do all that we need to do to move forward uh, in this setting. We pray your blessing upon these council media members, and we ask God for help even now in decision makings. We pray that you will guide every mind God, every heart, and we are open before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam City Clerk, if we could have the roll call, please. Mr. Sheffield. Present. Mr. Beaton. Present. Mr. Hollister. Present. Mr. Jefferson. Present. Ms. Pierce. Present. Patty vote is an excused absence for the record, Madam Chair. And Mary Jane Rosa is not present. Chair Van Rensburg. Present. We have Thank a you. quorum in the chambers, Madam Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Let's begin with our appeal processes, procedures, pardon me, and then we'll move on to our ex parte communication. <clears throat> Appeal procedures, the summary. Notice any person wishing to appeal any decision made by the Historic Preservation Board with respect to any matter considered at such meeting will need a record of the proceedings and for such purpose may need to ensure that a verbatim record of the proceedings is made, which record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. Florida Statute 286.0105. <clears throat> Moving on to ex parte communication. Would anyone like to participate? All right, moving on. Let's go to agenda item two, the approval of the minutes of the dis Madam, part Madam Chair, I have a, someone who's sworn in who was reappointed for another term. Wow, I get so excited. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, agenda item E, one of my very favorite people is swearing in ceremony for Timothy Jefferson. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. If I could get you to rise and raise your right hand. And if you would repeat after me, sir, I, Timothy Jefferson. I, Timothy Jefferson. A Historic Preservation Board appointee. A Preservation Board appointee. appointee of the Palaka City Commission. Of the Palaka City Commission. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will faithfully perform. That I will faithfully perform. The duties of my appointed office and will support and honor to the best of my ability all applicable laws of the state of Florida, Putnam County, the city of Palaka. I hereby through this oath affirm I will perform the duties of this public trust in a fair, equitable, and ethical manner Befitting the dignity and responsibilities of the office. Congratulations, Mr. Jefferson. And Madam Chair, I have tasked the new city attorney to please make this shorter. <laughs> I think it's brilliant, but it is a lot of big words. <laughs> All right, m moving on now logically um, to item two on our agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of the November 2nd 2023 meeting. I trust you've all had a look at these, scrutinized them, and are ready to make a decision on their approval. <laughs> May I have a motion to approve or to amend, etc.? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Ms. Pierce. A second? A second. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. All in favor say aye. And opposed. Excellent. Our November 2nd minutes are approved. Moving on to 
item number three on our agenda, which is public comments. However, these public comments, speakers are limited to three minutes, no action taken on items. And I understand that I do have a card in front of me, but I believe this is regarding the application itself. Okay, I just wanna make sure. Um, so we will open the regular public comment section of the meeting. And if we see no one, we'll close it again. We'll move then to our regular business, agenda item four, HPB case 2324, a certificate of appropriateness to replace an asphalt roof with a new metal roof. The owner is Laura Ann Cohn. The address is 312 South 9th Street, Black of Florida. The parcel number is 42-10-276850-1560-0150. Yes, sir. Yes, me this time. And I'll remember to turn on the microphone. Uh, Do we need to ask you your name and record address for the record? Or? I, I'm not sure if that's a procedural thing. Um, my name is Casey Cheap. I'm, I'm an urban planner here with the city of Palatka. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I haven't addressed this board yet in the short time that I've been here, but I'm looking forward to doing so many, many times in the future. Uh, so this is case HPB 2324. This is for a certificate of appropriateness at 312 South 9th Street. Uh, the owner is Laura Cohn. If you look on your guys's um, on the agenda pack at page 13, uh, figure one shows the subject property. Uh, in the map there. Page 14 of your agenda packet, uh, figure two shows the front elevation. Figure three is a nice um, kind of a compilation of photos of the current condition of the, the roof. Uh, this application request is for a certificate of appropriateness for a new roof. The applicant proposes new silver metal roof to replace the existing asphalt singled, I'm sorry, asphalt shingled roof uh, with exterior paint that matches the current uh, existing roof color. See again the um, figure three. Skipping ahead a little bit, figure four on your page 15 shows the proposed silver metal roof, sort of the type uh, that the applicant was thinking. Um, and I just want to highlight as well, in addition, the applicant has also sought and, and, and received staff level approval to repaint several aspects of the home exterior, including stairs, accent trim, uh, interior screen porch trim, and house base color. These are, I believe, like for like changes. Um, and you can see some of the color examples uh, in figure five there. Skipping ahead to the recommendations, staff recommends the Historic Preservation Board approve the applicant's request for a new silver metal roof. And I do want to highlight um, on page 15, kind of toward the bottom, um, uh, this is more of a for your situational awareness, but um, like I said, the, uh, the changes in figure five have been approved on the staff level. So I believe the applicant's sister is here um, in her stead, Laura Fitzberg, if you have any question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lisa. I'm sorry, Lisa. And um, I can also stand for questions if there are any for the board. Thank you very much, uh, board. Do we have any questions at the moment of city staff? Okay. In that case, um, Lisa, if you would join us, please. And if you would give your name and address for the record. Oh, my, my home address? Please. Um, Lisa Williams Fitzburg, 11 Rhodey Avenue, St. Augustine, 32084. Um, I am a realtor. I got involved with this project because um, my sister asked me to purchase it with her um, and also manage the renovations because um, it turns out that we picked the, uh, the roof is leaking in a couple of places because it's been neglected. So it, we need a roof for sure. Um, we noticed that on the street too, um, it's the only house with an asphalt roof. The rest are metal as well. And as far as economics, it was the least expensive replacement for the project. So we were happy to be here. And this is my third ARC uh, um, committee that I've been through. I've been through Duval, Daytona, and St. Augustine. So. Well, welcome to Balaka. Uh, yeah, right? No, well, this is the second house. The first house I worked on, it was a craftsman, and I recommended the owner 
um, put make it craftsman colors because it was like highlighted yellow. So I hope to keep improving the uh, town, making it kind of a an effort to, you know, whatever you guys are doing. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you being here before us today. Okay, thank, thank you. Although before you leave, um, oh. do we have questions for Miss? Oh my God, Fitz Fitzburg. Lisa Pittsburgh, yeah. Oh, okay. Fitz, Fitz, like Pittsburgh. Sorry, I'm I'm looking. I'm like, wow. Are you, you're a realtor and an attorney? No, no, I'm and not a an doctor. attorney. Oh, no, I'm just uh, from your signature. My dad was attorney, so I grew up with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only teasing, only teasing. Do we have questions, Mr. Beaton? Um, Madam Chair, um, on page, you need. Do you have a copy of this? Oh, you can I, see, I it, up can see it up here. Okay. Yeah. The colors, um, the staff is also asking us just to give our blessing of the colors, although that's normally something they do without our approval. But since we were asked, can you identify these colors and tell me, I can't really well, read what's going where, but I, it looks like, are you are these the existing colors? And well, the, the, the house faded a lot. It's I mean, I don't think it's been painted for 20 years. I okay, so right. the base... The base is kind of a off-white color. This is actually looks white, white, but it's actually like a creamier color. And the green and and the trim is kind of green. Okay. But the the base is the stairs of the paint's gone, but it was a, a like a charcoal gray color. So I kind of tried to match it up. And there is some blue um highlights on the trim. So we're trying to kind of bring it back, but make it pop and you know, it it's a 1930 I my house is 1890 I've got another house um yeah 20, so the, what 24 this is a, 1924 19. oh okay yeah so I'm, I'm trying to kind of have the colors of the period too but it um, we're going to try and highlight it so it bring the character out and make sure that you know people What about the um what about the the post in the front rail what are they are they going to be painted or are you leaving them Oh natural? the black yeah, well, they're, they're black now. You mean the, the stairs? Well, what I'm the rails? That that's not the house. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, okay. All right. I wish. Yeah, the, 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 I'm going to keep the, the the rails black. I'll probably, I mean, I don't know if you're going to have a problem with this, but paint the the white screen door black. Would you? I mean, would that be? I I didn't notice that it was white, but it's going to be white, white, and stand out. So black would kind of make it. Um, blend with the screens. You're going to leave that a handrail going up the front steps? Yeah, that's already black. Okay. And yeah. it's, is it on both sides? Yeah. Okay. All right. And so the base will be all dark gray. Okay. See, it's it looks pretty green here, but it's really, most of it's pretty faded. Gotcha. So I'm trying to get close to the color, but I'm going to hopefully make it pop okay. the, the features of it. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank so, you. Do we have other questions? No. <clears throat> All right, so um, just to reiterate, our staff recommendation is to um, approve the applicant's request for a new silver metal roof and also to just give a um, kind of a handshake approval for the exterior colors noted in the application. Chair, you need to open it up for public comment. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. I get <laughs> Right. So let's go ahead and open up for public comment. Let's close the public comment. My apologies. Um, and do we have questions or comments amongst ourselves? Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I have um, motion uh, to accept staff recommendation for approval of the applicant's request for a new silver roof and also to give the board's affirmation to the city that everything is good with uh, going back with light colors to what exist. Thank you, Mr. Beaton. Do we have a second to the motion? And I'll second. <laughs> I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Motion passes. And once again, welcome to the Black House. Thank you. Moving on to our agenda, item five, staff comments, please. 
Just a, a quick update. Um, the last certificate of appropriateness um, before you is now gone up for an, an appeal. This was the chain link fencing. Wait, am I on the right one? No, this was the certificate of appropriateness for the demolition of St. Mark's uh, that was denied. Um, they have retained counsel and that will be heard February 22nd before the city commission. Um, back to the little sprouts issue, the appellant there, Timothy Green, um, has filed a agenda request for the board to entertain a motion for reconsideration of the approval of that chain link fence mm -hmm. on the basis that it failed to meet the um, Department of Interior requirements for historical structures. And so that uh, agenda item will be heard next Thursday at the regularly scheduled city commission meeting. They're not obligated, um, but I just thought you might be aware of where your decisions are, <laughs> are, are landing. So if you have any questions about either one of those items, uh, please let me know. We appreciate that update. What What is likely to happen? Would it be remanded back to us? Would the city commission make a decision then and there? How, how does that appeal so, process work? Yeah, good question. So the motion for reconsideration can only come from the majority. It can't come from Commissioner Jones and the mayor both voted against. So they're not allowed to actually have a motion for reconsideration. It has to be from one of the other commissioners. And if they do go ahead and have that motion for reconsideration, it is legal department's recommendation that they remand it back to you with very explicit criteria on um, what should be followed uh, in terms of those design standards. So you may see it again, but if they don't make that motion, then it's it's over at that point, unless um, the appellant files a an appeal with circuit court. And I am so sorry, perhaps I missed that. Were you talking about the um, the demolition COA or were you talking about the no, fence? No, this is the fence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, I should also make you aware that um, one of the commissioners has requested that either the chair or a representative of this board attend um, meetings where your decisions are up on appeal. Um, you are not mandated to do so, um, but I, I just thought you might want to know if, if you haven't watched the city commission meetings, just to let you know that that was one of the requests. It would seem to me that that as the, the chair of the historical board, all I could really say at such meeting is this was the decision we made and this is how the vote came down. I couldn't say, for example, Mr. Jefferson felt this way or Mr. Beaton felt that way. Right. So, I do think it would put um, any of you in kind of a potentially awkward position where you might feel like you had to justify the vote of the entire board in um but I just wanted to let you know it was a request. Again, you are not mandated to under our code. I would be glad to attend. I'm just not certain what I could say, except for this was the decision that we made. It was made with the majority vote. Agreed. Exactly. Um, other staff comments? Perhaps about our brochure? Thank you. Thank you for that pr prod. Nudge. You... <laughs> nudge. Call it nudge. nudge. Okay, sorry. Former farm girl, prod cattle prod, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Miss Walsh, I'm the funny one. <laughs> no intent to steal your thunder, Madam Chair. Um, the brochure is still on Mr. Willis' desk. He now has a deadline of getting it to you by the next meeting, and he assures me that that will happen. Fantastic, and thank you. Uh, let's move on to uh, board comments. Anyone? Um, just a reminder for all of the many people in the room today, we do have a Palaka home tour this coming Saturday. And if you would like tickets, the best thing to do is just to show up on Saturday morning, bright and early at 10 o'clock at the Palaka Women's Club and purchase them. It's going to be fabulous. That's all I have. Mr. Beaton. Um, I had a citizen uh, contact me and I think this question has come up 
previously, but I'm not sure if this can be directed to staff to bring an answer back at our next meeting or how we want to handle this. Um, the question is concerning reuse of the granite curbing that's being removed, and in particular, what brought it to this person's attention was the um, newspaper coverage of redoing South 7th Street, or south of St. John's Avenue. And um, I, I know this question has been asked in the past, and I don't know if there's still the same answer with the city about um, this, but the granite curbing, as most of you know, is very historic. And the curbing that they've done both on the, in the North Historic District and the South Historic District, when they redid water lines and all, does not look historic. It's very, very modern highway, State Road 20 between Gainesville and Palaka look. <laughs> and uh, it just, it's not very appealing. It has a very uh, open highway look to it as opposed to a historic district. So I don't know if the board, I, I don't know. I know in the ordinance, that we're allowed to make recommendations to the city about uh, projects. And uh, perhaps our attorney can speak to what form we would need to do that in. But uh, I do think that we probably, if the board feels strong enough about it, I think probably we, we ought at least make a recommendation that we feel like that those historic materials, which have been in place for well over 100 years, uh, the ones that can be saved that aren't broken in the process of removing them ought to be try to try to reuse them in the historic districts. I think that is an absolutely brilliant thing to point out. I agree with you totally. Um, <clears throat> matter of fact, uh, Ms. West and I were just having a conversation earlier in the week where we talked about what the responsibilities actually were on paper for the Historic Preservation Board and indeed there is so much more that we can do that we are not doing, like make recommendations of this of this sort. Um, I would say the easy answer is someone should call Public Works, um, but the more difficult answer, which is an answer that I think perhaps we should partake in, is yes, let's make a recommendation. Absolutely. Yes, under the code, it's actually one of your your first duties to recommend to the city commission by means of designation reports the establishment of historic districts and sites, and it goes through this long litany of things that you can do proactively um, to preserve the integrity of the historic district. So it's you actually have some really unique opportunities. Um, and the chair and I were discussing meeting after the, the holidays to kind of come up with the game plan and, and bring that back in the form of a presentation uh, to this board so you can start doing stuff that isn't solely reactive to an application for a certificate of appropriateness. I think that is an excellent game plan. Um, but in the meantime, how would we go about getting the, the granite curb idea? All public works. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, <clears throat> Marsha? Uh, this is Marsha Ganu, our, uh, she's a program announcer, program manager. Yeah. Well project manager but thank you for the promotion <laughs> um it's it's a I, I think it's a great idea i can tell you that the um the bid documents that that i've processed and that we've had through that was that just wasn't a consideration that we had proactively at the time so i think we can bring it up i mean um you know calling public works it's really dill mcmillan that we need to speak to if you wanted to generate an email to myself and dill then we can bring it through staff and see what the uh um, you know, it's like, just like we've saved the, we, we have put in <clears throat> some of the, um, procurement docs to save Microphone's any of the close. old. Microphone's too close, Marsha. Oh, okay. you're hearing that popping. Too, oh, to save. I'm too close to the microphone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, to save the bricks. So those have been stockpiled and, and we, you know, could and probably should do the same thing. So I would say generate an email to, uh, Del McMillan and myself, and then we'll take okay. a look at that. I understand. And when you say generate an email, would you like me to do that? Or is that something I can ask um, staff to, to help me out with? 
I think it should come from you. I think it should come from the Historic Preservation Board. Would you all feel comfortable with me doing that? Do we feel that that requires a vote of some sort? Okay, can I do it after the Christmas home tour? <laughs> Excellent, thank you so much. There was a big pile of it um, over by the Florida Furniture Place on the Kirby Street, the on the outside of their fence, it was accessible from, you know, that side. I've seen a lot of it disappear. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, pretty strong. Stuff. Oh, you no, you you have. There there are a lot of motivated citizens in Palaka, <laughs> and there's a lot of places you wouldn't worry about things being carried away and towed away. But here, everybody has a truck, everybody has a winch and trailer, and it happens. <laughs> but, yep. I mean, there were there were probably thirty granite curbs piled there, and now it's I think it's just down to five or six. Chris <laughs> or Mr. Hollister. <laughs> but they one one option is um, we'll be, that we we'll can be look by to pick them up, Mr. Hollister. Yeah. <laughs> that we could, um, you know, we 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 have stored material, public works, yeah. you know, yeah. yep, secure it. So I think it's a I think it's a great recommendation. And that you know we'd be happy to take a look at that and and, and respond back with what we um, opportunities to do something different in the future. Certainly, um, Mr. Beaton, would you mind helping me draft the letter? That would be fantastic. Thank you so much, ladies, gentlemen. Mr. Beaton, I, I think I mentioned this at a previous meeting, but uh, I would like, and there's no rush on this, obviously, but I would like. Um, us to take a look at the new historic survey that was done. Uh, there's some recommendations in it for adding some properties, both to the North District and the South District, and some other properties that are really pretty significant structures in the city. And uh, I would like us to take a look at that and see how we could proceed with that. As I'm sure everybody knows, we're not going to be welcome with open arms for people to come into the historic districts because of all the restrictions that the homeowner or business owner has. But I think there are some properties that are adjacent to the existing districts that people would welcome being part of the historic districts. So I'd just like us to take a serious look at that and look, just go, at least go through the recommendations that the uh, the consultant had uh, for us to take a look at. Thank you, Mr. Beaton. Um, I, I'm loving the idea of a um, January workshop about our additional job opportunities. Um, Ms. Walsh, how about a February workshop to delve into that report deeper and see what we can what we can do from there? Would that work? Yes, ma'am. We can try to arrange that, yes. Oh, you sound so excited. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> in in lieu of, a, in addition to a regular meeting, is that what you're saying, or do you want as part of a regular meeting? Depending on how the, the, the agenda is at the February meeting, I, I don't mind staying afterwards. I, I don't mind staying after or having it as, as part of a, a, a separate uh, meeting. Okay. Uh, is my, I don't know if others want to speak to that. <laughs> okay, we'll look at we'll look at the workload and make that decision. I mean, alternately, um, if if you would like to to put some information in a nutshell for us in the form of an email that we could look at beforehand, and then that might kind of expedite the process at the end of our February meeting. Okay, sure, good, All right, excellent, All right, ladies, gentlemen. Mr. Yeah, Shepard. From a legal standpoint, in terms of our, our meetings being public, I know decisions and discussions of, of uh, applications are, but does this fall into having separate workshops consider uh, something that needs to be uh, public also? Yes. Yes, okay. it, it would. Sorry. And I don't see a problem with having a workshop as part of an agenda item for your regularly scheduled meeting. Everyone's used to this time frame. You have it blocked off on your schedules. So if the agenda is, is fairly light, and they seem to have been, um, we can just include it in that meeting. 
All right. Ladies, gentlemen. Motion to adjourn. I